Welcome to Vanadium. I'm Chris Rankin. The more I learn about this mad world, the more mysterious it seems. Human beings have devised, built, and set into action no shortage of horrifying weapons. Technologies fetched from the darkest recesses of the intellect and imagination, yielding destruction sometimes beyond the wildest dreams of even the people who invented them. Nuclear weapons remain the most dangerous machines ever designed and constructed. It's a good thing plutonium and enriched uranium are hard to come by, and it takes knowledge and expertise spanning many fields of science and engineering to make them work. It would be scary to think of nuclear weapons being cooked up and taped together using crystal meth level manufacturing and quality control. Nuclear weapons are the baddest in the business of war, retaining the title over many decades now. It's been a while since the first Trinity test in 1945. Since then, nuclear weapons never stopped being the scariest, but they've gotten much scarier over the years. Nuclear weapons are not created equal. The fission bombs, relying on the splitting of atoms, have been largely replaced by fusion-based devices, or thermonuclear warheads. These work by fusing hydrogen atoms together into helium, releasing massive energy in the same way stars, including our sun, do. Fusion weapons also require a nuclear fission explosion in order to generate enough energy to start the process. So thermonuclear devices require conventional nuclear bombs pretty much just to light the fuse for the main event. Even some thermonuclear explosives are minuscule in contrast to others, the city destroyers, the true doomsday weapons. One bomb claims the title, the most destructive, most powerful weapon ever designed and tested. The Tsar Bomb. Great name. Other code names include AN602, Ivan, or my personal favorite, Vanya. This thermonuclear test in the Arctic Circle created a miniature sun just above planet Earth. The fireball was nearly blinding, even a thousand kilometers or over 600 miles away. The radiation fouled up radio communications around the world for nearly 40 minutes. The blast created a ripple in the Earth's crust that was measured to circle the globe three times. If aliens were watching these strange animals known as humans, the Soviet Union certainly got their undivided attention in 1961 with this little fireworks display. Before the show-stopping work on Tsar Bomba started, the Soviet Union had actually fallen behind significantly in the nuclear arms race to the U.S. They had nukes, but the U.S. had a larger arsenal with a lot more potent versions. It took an unusual spy to let the Soviets know that they needed to improve their game to keep up with the U.S. This particular spy, Klaus Fuchs, was in deep, deep cover. Klaus Fuchs was a scientist with the highest academic pedigree, working in the most prestigious labs with generations of the most respected names in solid-state physics. This undercover agent, Klaus Fuchs, also had someone pulling the strings. A handler called Ruth Lerner, or Ursula Kaczynski, codenamed Sonia. She's the one who guided him into and through his clandestine work for Stalin in the Soviet Union. She convinced him to steal the information about the state of American and British nuclear technology and send it back to the USSR. When Fuchs delivered the word that the Soviets were getting smoked in the arms race, Stalin was not pleased. He went into immediate action to assemble a team to compete with and defeat the United States. Stalin needed someone very special to lead this massive and highly technical operation, and it didn't take him long to make his choice. Igor Kurchatov, professor at the USSR Academy of Sciences. Kurchatov was a legend for both his scientific expertise and his madman personality. Once during a problem with a test, he walked straight into a nuclear reactor while being perfectly aware of the dangers. Kurchatov figured he would be fine, and he was fine for a while. Kurchatov had a reputation for technical skill, drive, and organizational ability. His early scientific work was focused on dielectric and ferroelectric crystals, 
One of his most important results was the discovery of the ferroelectric properties of Rochelle salt. As a note to the vanadium audience, your intrepid host also spent a few years studying these ferroelectric materials. I actually have a sample of Rochelle salt, potassium sodium tartrate, that I keep on a shelf in the studio. Kurchatov's discoveries with Rochelle salt earned him two doctoral degrees, one in physics and the other in mathematics. He was awarded these degrees without even having to write a dissertation. Now that's impressive. To get your degree without the paperwork, that's no small feat anywhere, but even more so in a bureaucracy like the Soviet Union. Kurchatov was the Soviet's man for the job, and all through his years as the Soviet father of nuclear energy, he did deliver. Development of the Tsar Bomba was completed in just 112 days. That's a light speed for an operation of that magnitude. After just 112 days, Vanya was ready to debut. The day before Halloween, in October of 1961, the Tsar Bomba prototype had to be parachuted down to the test site to give the bomber pilot enough time to get away from the blast before the device reached the detonation altitude of 4,000 meters or 13,000 feet above the Dry Nose Cape in the Arctic Circle of Russia. At 11.32 a.m. Moscow time, the Tsar Bomba exploded, triggering a thermonuclear reaction. A star was born. The Soviet Union kept the detonation secret, but the blast was detected by the United States intelligence agencies. The U.S. had a secret reconnaissance aircraft, a Boeing KC-135A, named Speedlight Alpha in the area at the time. It was close enough to monitor the 57 megaton Russian Tsar Bomba explosion the aircraft getting close enough to get its anti-radiation paint scorched. A Soviet cameraman aboard the bomber plane that dropped the Tsar Bomba described the blast. The clouds beneath the aircraft and in the distance were lit up by the powerful flash. The sea of light spread under the hatch and even the clouds began to glow and became transparent. At that moment, our aircraft emerged from between two cloud layers and down below in the gap, a huge bright orange ball was emerging. The ball was powerful and arrogant like Jupiter. Slowly and silently, it crept upwards. Having broken through the thick layer of clouds, it kept growing. It seemed to suck the whole earth into it. The spectacle was fantastic, unreal, supernatural. The mushroom cloud was about 67 kilometers, about 42 miles high over seven times the height of Mount Everest. The cap of the mushroom cloud had a peak width of 95 kilometers, just about 60 miles. The Tsar Bomba explosion was the single largest man-made release of energy in human history. The monstrous and mystifying explosive display caught the entire world's attention. People close to the Tsar Bomba project maintained the success of that program and the rest of the Soviet nuclear effort came down to Kurchatov's leadership and technical aptitude. For his part in establishing the Soviet nuclear program, Kurchatov was awarded the title of Hero of Socialist Labor, the Stalin Prize, first class, also the sum of 500,000 rubles, a Z1S-110 Soviet limousine, a private house and cottage furnished by the state. He doubled his salary and he was given the right for life for him and his wife to travel for free by rail, water, or air transport anywhere in the USSR. Quite a windfall of a prize, but Kurchatov's cavalier style working with radioactive materials ended up shortening his life. The Tsar Bomba case shows how one person can play a major role in building a superpower and changing the world. Igor Kurchatov showed how much of a difference technology can make in the story of human civilization. Thank you very much. This is Chris Rankin with Vanadium. <laughs>